All right, we'll go ahead and get started. Happy um, Friday, everybody. Let me go ahead and just uh, clear all these outputs here. Okay, well, today we're going to talk about tuples, all right? Um, tuples are very similar to lists, but they are immutable. So in, in that regard, they're also completely different from lists. So uh, they, they can uh, contain objects like lists. They can contain objects of different types. They are also in order, so you refer to items or objects within the tuple. Uh, you, you can uh, refer to them using uh, index position, you know, position I and whatnot. Uh, unlike a list, they are immutable. So all of the list methods that modify the list directly, such as e extending the list or appending the list or, you know, indexing and uh, using assignment or using assignment in conjunction with slicing uh, and saying, you know, I want to change the uh, item at uh, index position 2 to a different value, you cannot do that with a tuple. Um, tuples are uh, created, um, if you just kind of write items separated by commas. So here I just have t equals to 0, comma, apple, comma, 2, cat, dog, 5, and 6. And, um, and this will create a tuple. Pen parentheses are not uh, required uh, to create a tuple. And so if I, if I run that first code cell, and then I execute it, you will see that it has uh, been kind of gathered together into a tuple by Python, right? And, and of course, you can also directly create the tuple yourself using, um, using parentheses or curved braces. And so here I've done the, created the exact same tuple um, using uh, curved braces, yes. Uh, when, when is it better to use a tuple versus a list? So you, you want to think uh, about the situation or the scenario, and you kind of ask yourself, is this a thing that should be modified at some point in the future? Okay, And if the answer is yes, then, then you need to use a list, something where you can then change what the, uh, what the values inside that thing are. If, on the other hand, you, um, you ask yourself, should this ever be changed in the future? And if the answer is no, then, um, then you keep it as a tuple, OK? So um, I'm trying to think what, what's, a, what's a good example. Um, yeah, off the top of my head, I can't think of a, a great example right now, but basically, um, you know, if you're going to keep track of several several values, and if those values are going to be like unchanging, these are kind of like things to identify, um, you know, identify something, then a, a tuple makes sense. Whereas if it's like this thing contains, you know, values or data, and these values or data might change, then probably a list makes sense. So if it's something like um, you know, a person's, I guess, something to kind of link their identity. So like a person's, say, name and social security number or whatever, perhaps you would use a tuple there. But if it's like these are some traits like this person, like uh, a child's height or their weight or something like that, you might use a list so that those values can be, can be changed at some point or something like that. Okay. Um, so... So anyway, uh, yeah, tuple creation is this. We'll, we'll look over at some examples of like when we can use a tuple. Um, you know, tuples are because they're immutable. They can be used as keys in a dictionary, right? Um, versus a list cannot be used uh, as a key in a dictionary. So if you're ever in a situation where you want to be able to kind of um, you know have like multiple values to kind of look look something up. Then, um, then we can use it. Oh, I'll show you an example. Okay, all right. So um, you can also create a tuple that contains just one value. <laughs> all right, and so you just kind of put the your one value and you put like a, a comma after that, and that will become a tuple containing the character a. Versus if I didn't have the comma, 
this would just be the character A, right? So if, if you want it to be a tuple, you can put a comma after that, and that will recognize that as a tuple, right? So this is, this is if you ask what is the type, the type on a tuple is tuple, um, and you know the length is how many how many items are in there. Okay. If you just create, uh, if you don't put a comma after it, this will just create a, a string, right? So um, so that's what we have there. Uh, you need the, if you want to create a tuple of length one, it's got to be um, the character by itself. Okay. Uh, you can also create an empty tuple using um, tuple. Uh, the tuple function, just like we have a list function or a dictionary function, and that creates an empty tuple. And you can also take um, other things that are iterables and they become tuples. So the string hello is an iterable con consisting of all of the characters, okay, in hello. And so when you do that, um, it takes all of the individual characters, because again, uh, a string is basically a whole bunch of characters kind of strung together, okay, and um, and so it will do that. We can take a range 5 object and we will get 0, 1, 2, 3, 4 in the tuple. Um, and then what would this do? Tuple 1, 4, 7, that's just a list and so those those elements will just become a, a tuple, right? So you can take an existing uh, iterable uh, and make tuples out of them, okay? Um, the regular old, uh, so you, you can subset tuples using um, our standard indexing rules. So um, the, what is the uh, item at um, position one, index position one in the tuple, and that's gonna be uh, the string apple. And then you can also slice. So what will this give me? If I say slice from two colon five, it'll start at what? what and end where. It'll go from two and at dog, okay? So um, we're starting to feel okay about slicing things, slicing things and indexing uh, Python's indexing rules. Okay, so here I'm creating ba uh, basically two almost equivalent objects, um, but one is a tuple and one is a list. So with a list, we can say, hey, take the value at index position zero on the list and change it from zero to 100, right? Index position zero right now is zero. And so if I change that, it becomes 100 and we get um, that. Whereas if you try to do it with a tuple, you get an error and it says assignment is not allowed with, um, with, a, with a tuple, okay? Because because they are immutable, all right? And similarly, if you uh, try, um, if you take the list and you append a value to it, okay. So all of these methods, append, list, pop. I'm sorry, append or insert. Um, these all uh, modify the uh, the list, whereas just the tuple just doesn't even have that method, right? So it says tuple has no attribute um, called append, okay, and and that's that. So, um, so if you do want to <laughs> change a tuple or something, right? So let's say we wanted to take this tuple and we wanted to change the first element to say the letter A, all right? So just like kind of like a string, you can't change the letters in a string. What you can do though is you can create an entirely new string that has the stuff that you want. And similarly, you can just create an entirely new tuple that has the stuff that you want. And so here I can take a tuple containing the capital letter A and I can take you know, um, the tuple that contains everything going from index position one and forward and I can just add those two together. Or I mean the plus operator is kind of a append them or concatenate them together or combine them. I don't know what the uh, the right word is here. <laughs> okay, we're going to just stick them together. That creates just an entirely new tuple, unrelated to the the other tuple. And then with that entirely new tuple that I've created, I'm going to assign it back to the name T, and that and that will do that. Yes. When you slice yes, it, it it creates basically a, a slice of that tuple. So or it, it returns. A new tuple containing those elements, yeah. And so the original 
Um, and actually, all, all slicing just kind of creates new things of that thing. So even with a list, uh, the original list is unmodified. The slice is just kind of the, that subset that you've sliced out. So, um, so here is just an entirely new thing. And, and now the name T no longer points to the old tuple. And, and so there's no kind of, unless we have another name pointing to that old tuple, um, it, uh, it doesn't exist. Whoops, what did I do? Um, uh, and so it'll you know go away in the garbage collector. Right? So this creates entirely new tuples unrelated to the other one. Okay, um, relational operators work with tuples and other sequences. And the way um, tuple comparison works, kind of you think of it almost like uh, the way you would compare um, like how do you when you alphabetize two words, right? And so if you're gonna alphabetize uh, app, Apple, and uh, application, you know how do you, how do we do something like this? So you know, oops. Um, let me just let's say let's say we have um, uh, you know app, Apple. Oh no, application also has two P's. Uh, is there an AP? Everything has double two P's, huh? Okay, uh, I don't know. We'll just we'll just go with completely different letters, right? So you know you look at the first letter A, and then you look at the next letter, and so because the L comes before the <laughs> the um, the letter P in the alphabet, the the correct um, ordering will go will go like this, right? And, and similarly, when you do something with a tuple like this, so here uh, I have 0, 1, and 2, okay? And I'm, and I'm going to ask, compare that to, say, 0, 3, and 4. You can kind of think of this almost like um, if we, you know, the 0 position, this would be like ABC versus A, uh, Three would be D E, okay, and uh, and this is very easy to kind of arrange. Like you know, does A B C come before A D E? That does in the uh, in the alphabet, right? And so similarly, if we if I ask you know what what's comes before the other, that's how we you know we get this, right? Um, in this next one, I'm saying zero one two million or whatever this is, yeah, two million versus zero three four. And this is this would be kind of like A B Z versus A D E, okay? And so it looks at the first element, then it looks at the next element, and here we have a B versus like the letter D, a one versus a three, and then so it doesn't matter that this last one is two million or Z or whatever it is, you know, it's um, it doesn't it doesn't care. So this is also going to be true, right? Here I've got zero five hundred two, so this would be like A Z C versus you know A D E, and uh, and in that case this is going to come later because the five hundred is greater than the three, right? So you're uh, when it does tuple comparisons, it goes order by order, and it just says um, you know position the index position zero, um, which one is greater, and if there's a match, then it goes to the next position, which one's greater, uh, and that's how it kind of sorts. That's how it compares tuples as far as is one tuple greater or less than the other tuple. Okay, and you know similarly, you can just take you know much in the same way. Like we could take any of these strings. You could imagine taking the string and converting it to a tuple, and then so you know is ABC less than ABCD? You know that that's going to be true. Um, you know, but if I change you know AZC then that's going to become false because Z comes after B in the alphabet, so on and so forth. All right, let me give you your first view quiz answer. Um, quiz answer one uh, is E. For week three Friday. So, um, so one thing 
that's kind of neat about tuples is you can like unpack and assign. <laughs> so there's tuple unpacking, and uh, and that can be used in conjunction with assignment here. So in code, if you had a variable a and it had the value five, and a variable b that had the value one, and you wanted to say, you know what, I want b to be five and a to be one, you would have to use kind of like a temporary uh, stand-in because if you didn't, and if you if you had something like a equals five, uh, b equals one, and then you wanted to do something like, okay, I want b to get the value five, and so you say, all right, I'm going to take the value of b uh, a and assign it to b, and then you wanted to say, okay, now a gets b, and you swap it that way, then you know a a is going to have the value five, and b is also going to have the value five, right? You can't you can't do a swap sequentially, like if you wanted to swap the values in there, because once you take the value 5 and assign it to b, this value that used to be 1, you know, b that has the value 1, that got overwritten and there's no, no longer a reference to, to the value 1. So if you wanted to do something like that, um, you know, you would have to kind of create a temporary placeholder. You would do a equals 5, b equals 1, you would take the value of a and assign it maybe temporarily to to a you know placeholder then you would take the value b and assign it to a or something so a gets the value one then you take that temporary placeholder assign it back to b and then now you can say okay a and b we've swapped those values a now has one and b has five okay um, one nice feature about python is you can do uh, multiple assignment at once in conjunction with the tuple. So here I can just do a equals 5, b equals 1, and then if I want to swap positions, I just say b, b comma a is equal to a comma b. And so this does it in one line, and, and we swap the values there. Okay. So this is, um, right, so we have the tuple, and then it gets unpacked right here, and it gets reassigned uh, over here. And, and Python has no trouble um, it, it understands that this is an operation that's done at one time, not you know sequentially, um, which would you know produce problems there. Um, okay. Uh, so here, uh, I've got you know my email address, and if I do um, address dot uh, you know the string dot split, I'm going to split at the at sign. Okay, this returns a list, right? And it returns a list of, of basically two elements here because there's one, one thing that's before the at sign, one thing that's after the at sign. There's, there's only one at sign in this, in this thing, and so, um, so I get two things. Uh, with tuple, tuples, you can unpack, right? You can unpack and assign these things, and we've seen this before, so I can just take, take the same result, and I can um, split it and I can assign each thing, the, the first element to username, the second element to the domain, and now um, these things are, um, you know, carry their own values. And so th this will be, this is a common type of thing that you see in code a lot, because a lot of times uh, a function returns multiple values, and you want to kind of uh, unpack them into uh, a lot of things. So for example, um, like in machine learning, one of these packages is this uh, train test split. Okay, so um, if you've ever dealt with machine learning, you know you often have your kind of training data or whatever, and uh, and your testing data, and so you have your full data set, and you want to split it into training parts that will be used to train your model, and then you want to be able to evaluate the performance of your model on the testing set, and then you uh, might have uh, the x component. And the Y component, and so you know when you feed your entire data set into the function, it's going to return four things, and you will frequently see it being unpacked as train X, train Y, test X, test Y. So, so a lot of these functions return multiple values, and you will just see them getting assigned to their names in, um, directly with the tuple. So, so this is something that you will frequently see, and it is it cannot be done with a list. You can't just take a list and then unpack them into a you know a, a thing of lists or, uh, um, so so that's that's done with the tuples here okay uh, so here's a another function so this function already exists but or actually um, 
yeah, yeah, this function already exists. It's a d the divide function. Um, but if you want, like, so if you're going to do x divided by y, perhaps if you wanted to do it, um, you know, not return a decimal, but return an integer and a uh, remainder, okay, we can do that, right? We can do um, uh, integer floor division by doing x slash slash y. So that's going to give you just the integer component of x divided by y. And then the remainder is basically the mod. So we're going to do uh, x modulo y. And so, um, so we'll get that. Okay, and so this will return a tuple containing these two values, integer and remainder. Okay, and uh, and I can do this, and uh, my divide will be um, I can take twenty three divided by five. So this should give me four remainder three, and indeed we see uh, we get four remainder three. Okay, um, and there is a div mod function already that does exactly this, and it looks like this four comma three. And I think, let me just um, actually, let me copy this. And you know, you can you can make your you know you don't even have to. You could have your function be like this one liner, and I'm pretty sure this will still work. Yeah, so. So you know you can make it more concise uh, without naming the actual elements here either, and uh, and then Python understands like oh yeah okay we're going to just return this thing and then we're going to return this thing right. I you know I'm when I write code I write it for myself as far as like so I can read it easier. So I like to name all of my things and do this. But you know if you're all like <laughs> into some <laughs> something where it's like let's write the thing that's like the least amount of characters. You can also do this, and uh, and and it will work just fine. Okay, so I don't know what we would call this. This is you know more concise, but perhaps slightly harder to read. <laughs> That's always um, the the old joke about coding is um, the person you collaborate most with. Is uh, is yourself from uh, the past, and uh, and that person doesn't return emails. So um, you always kind of want to make sure that you can understand um, what you're doing, because when you read your code, you know months later, you're not going to remember what you were thinking, or and you know unless most people don't remember what they were thinking when they were writing code from months ago. And then so when you as you're reading things, you're like, what was what was going on? And so. Um, so yeah, uh, yeah, and if you ever try to read someone else's code, you know how frustrating of an experience that can be. And uh, and so again, <laughs> a lot of times you read your own code, your old code, and you're like, oh gosh, I was such a dummy. But you know, we learn, right? And and so your coding techniques get better. Okay, um, the the methods from lists that don't modify anything so things like uh, dot index right so dot index gives you the index position of um, you know whatever uh, that thing is so in this case uh, this is index position four so we can say what is t dot index uh, of dog and it will say okay that's index position four uh, dot count will tell you um, you know how many times does a certain element appear so five appears one time in the tuple. These are things that kind of just return information about the list or the tuple, and so and they don't modify the list, so they also work for tuples because they're not going to modify anything about the tuple. They're just kind of giving you back information about the tuple. So so we like that. Okay, um, these are lists. Or, these are uh, functions, and these functions can be used on a tuple. They can be used on a list. They can be used on um, other iterables like strings and whatnot. Okay, uh, well, assuming, <laughs> well, I guess, um, well, not a, the sum won't work on a string and stuff like that. But um, but here I've got um, a tuple of digits and so or a tuple of integers, I should say, and I've got a list of words, and we can ask, you know, what is the length? And it says, okay, you've got seven seven uh, values in there. Um, I could take the, uh, because they're all numeric, I can sum them, okay? Obviously sum is not gonna work on a list of, uh, of strings, okay? 
uh, but you can take the digits and you can sort them. And again, remember, dots, uh, uh, the function sorted returns a copy and doesn't actually <coughs> um, modify the original thing. And sorted uh, returns actually a list here, okay? So here it's going to take the tuple, it's going to sort this, and it returns the, uh, the list, uh, a list of those digits in sorted order. Um, versus, you know, list.sort, list.sort will take it and um, uh, sort it in place. Uh, here, again, if we say, hey, what was the original tuple? The original tuple is unchanged. We can do it with the, uh, the list as well, and it, doesn't, um, it does the exact same thing. You can ask, what is the minimum of a tuple? And it will give you the smallest value. What is the maximum? Um, and if it's, uh, if it's something like a list of words, it's going to give you the thing in the uh, last, after you alphabetize it, the thing that comes last will be um, what gets word uh, returned. So what do we have? Apple, cat, dog, hand, and hat. That's already in, um, oh no, that, that's in sorted order. The original one was dog, apple, cat, hat, hand. So after you sort them from an alphabetical order, what's the last thing is going to be the, quote, max, the, the max of the thing. Um, here is a dictionary. Okay. In this dictionary, I have um, dictionary underscore number, or uh, will be uh, the keys are numbers, the values are strings. Dictionary alpha, the keys are letters, and the values are numbers. Okay, and a, uh, you know, in a dictionary, you can use numbers as keys. You can use letters as keys. You can use anything that is immutable. So you can also use tuples as keys in a dictionary. All right, the l length of a dictionary is how many elements um, or how many keys total, how many items are in the dictionary, key value pairs. And so uh, whatever dictionary we're talking about, we've got three things in there. If you sort them, it'll take the keys and put them in sorted order. The, the I mean, yeah, um, so here the, the keys are just one, two, three. They already are sorted. Sa similar with the, the dictionary, it takes the keys A, B, C, and, and does that, and the max of a dictionary is also the maximum key. So again, these are you know a little bit strange to think about using, say, um, min and max and stuff like that. But uh, but that works there. I don't think. I don't know actually. I've never thought to try this until just now. So if I do some of the dictionary with numbers, I wonder if this will work or if it will return six. I don't know. Let's try it. Oh, okay. It takes the keys and it adds them up. It just says, oh, the keys are numbers, I can do it. So it does it. All right. Obviously, so, but if I try to do it with the keys with the alpha, it's going to say you can't do that. But, uh, okay. So um, so that that mystery is answered there. Um, I don't know how off, uh, I guess, I, yeah, I guess if uh, the keys refer to something directly, you might want to know what is the sum of all the keys. So you can also do that. Uh, I mean, I, if I were to think of it, I would have probably done um, dictionary dot number dot. Uh, I would have used the uh, keys view object. Okay, so so you take the dictionary and you have the keys view object, and then I would have just like summed it. Okay, but uh, but I guess you can just call sum directly. All right. Um, The math operators, we've seen some of this. Uh, we've seen you know, addition, we've seen multiplication, and these behaviors, if you think of these all as iterables, and all of these iterables behaving in a similar way, then I think a lot of these things will make sense. So here I've got list one and list two. If I take list one and I do the star two operator, it's gonna take the elements in list one, kind of duplicate it, and kind of extend it, right? So we're gonna get uh, A, B, C, A, B, C, L1 plus L2 kind of just takes those and combines them. So uh, it's going to give me A, B, C, D, E, F, right? Um, same thing here. Same thing with the tuples. I've got tuple 1 is A, B, C. Tuple 2 is D, E, F. Same exact kind of behavior. Tuple 1 times 2 is going to be A, B, C, A, B, C. Tuple 1 plus tuple 2 will be A, B, C, D, E, F. Um, if you try to take a list and a tuple and try to combine them, Python says, I don't know how to do this, OK? Because you, you, you feel like, oh, you know, just give me A, B, C, D, E, F. Um, but it doesn't like that. 
you have to explicitly take the tuple and make it into a list first, and then you can do it. So you can say, hey, I know this is a tuple. I want to make it into a list. And, uh, and then Python says, OK, I understand now. <laughs> okay, um, so it doesn't it doesn't automatically kind of convert types when you try to take a tuple in a list versus like numeric types it will automatically convert from an integer uh, into a float uh, if it needs to and uh, and add it uh, no problem and you can add you can add uh, an integer and a float. Uh, all right, let me give you your second view quiz answer. Uh, answer two is the letter B. So. Question two is B. Okay, uh, a lot of times uh, functions will take in arguments, and sometimes you want to have a function where you can provide an unspecified number of arguments. So, for example, you might want to say, I want to be able to, like, for example, the sum function. You can give it uh, like a list of two things and it'll add those two together. You can give it like 10 things and it will add all 10 things together, right? So that would be a function that can take in uh, a mul you know, multiple arguments there, okay? Um, so here, if, if I do um, uh, a function called print all args, right now it only takes one argument. It, it only allows for one thing. So if I say, hey, uh, here's a tuple 135 uh, on high, okay? It's or, um, it says this only takes one argument args, and you gave me four things, so I don't know what to do. Okay, so so Python doesn't like that, but you do this little star operator, <laughs> and this suddenly makes everything uh, magical. Okay, so this this uh, will take all of the arguments, the, the multiple arguments, gather them into a tuple. Okay. And um, and it does that, okay? So here it takes all of the uh, arguments. We've got four arguments. It gathers in them into a tuple, and then so now um, we can print it, and it prints out the tuple containing these four things. So if you wanted to kind of print uh, each of these things individually, you could do uh, star args, okay? It gathers your multiple elements into a single tuple, and then you can iterate over the tuple. So we can say for each element, in that uh, tuple containing all of these arguments after they've been combined together or gathered together, we can say print the element. All right. So here I'm going to say print lines high comma goodbye. It gathers high and goodbye into a single tuple, and then it's going to print each element separately. So it's going to do high and goodbye. Here I've got one five seven nine ten, and it prints each of these things uh, on its own, on its own. Right. So these here I gave it two arguments, and it did it. And here I gave it five arguments, and it did it. And so if you want to have a function that's able to have you know, an unspecified number of arguments, you'll use um, the star to kind of gather things into a tuple. Um, OK, so here um, I've got uh, my divide here. And oh, OK, so the star operator here also <laughs> uh, can uh, be used to I guess blow up a tuple, okay, to or to separate them. What we call the scattering, okay. So the, the kind of the opposite a action of gathering would be to scatter. And so if you have a sequ sequence of values and you want to kind of turn them into multiple arguments, you can use the star operator on the tuple when you call it, okay. So over here, I use the star operator in the definition of the function to say, hey, take your multiple arguments and gather them together into one tuple. Here, when you call the function and you want to take your, your single object and scatter them into multiple values, you use the star operator during the call. So here I've got, you know, again, my divide function, which takes in two arguments. It takes in an x and it, and it says we're going to divide by y. So I'm going to have um, t be a tuple containing 23 and 5. And if I say, hey, run this on t, it's going to complain. And it's going to say, hey, you only gave me one argument. You gave me, so before it even attempts to try to use x, first, the very first thing it does when you call this 
is it says, okay, the function says x, it wants an x, and it has a y. And in here, it just sees this as a single object, the tuple 23 comma 5, and it assigns it to x, and then it says, I have nothing for y. And so before it even, before it even looks at the lines inside the code, it just says, I can't even do this very first thing where you called it, right? So during this, uh, the call, it says, I don't have a thing for Y. So again, during the call, you just put a star next to the tuple. It's going to then scatter that 23 and 5. The 23 goes to X, the 5 goes to Y, and, uh, and it works. Um, if you tried to do something like, um, okay, and then, um, and then you call uh, my divide here, now, now it complains because it's scattered the T into three arguments, and it says, you know, you're trying to call it with twenty with three arguments. It, I got the twenty three to the X, I got the five to the Y, and now I have the two, and I don't know what to do with it. Okay. Um, you can take um, here's the zip function. So again, uh, zip takes these two iterables and it interleaves them, and so here I've got a string ABC and then a tuple zero one two and I can uh, interleave them. And um, during the zip object, which is an iterator, basically it only goes through the sequence as we, um, as it requests them, okay? So we're gonna say, you know, for pair in, uh, you know, S and T and something like that, okay? And it, and it only thinks of those things as, as it goes. So unlike, um, so I could take this, the zipped object, and I can make a list out of it, and it puts all of these things, okay? Um, but you can't, you can't ask, what is the fourth thing in the zip object? Or, or what is the third thing in the zip object, right? I can ask, what is, what is the uh, third thing in this list? I can say, what is that index position two? And that's fine. But you can't do it directly with the zip object, because a zip object only knows what the third thing is when it gets to the third thing, <laughs> okay? So um, it's kind of like if I ask you, hey, what is the uh, 20th value of the Fibonacci sequence? You probably don't know off the top of your head, but could you do it? You could, right? You just have to kind of go through and you go, okay, one and one and two and three and five and eight and I don't know, 13, whatever, and you can eventually get there, but you don't know what the answer is until you get there, okay? And similarly, when you create a zip object or you create any kind of, we call these things um, iterators in Python, these things, uh, you know, it's not like Python has already calculated out all of these values. It just says, I'm gonna just, I'm only gonna <laughs> figure it out when you ask me to, to do it, right? So it's kind of like these instructions and it's only gonna generate, it's only gonna use the computational power until it asks it. Now if you say, give me a list of, you know, the first 20 values in the Fibonacci sequence, It'll calculate all of these things and do it, but that that takes a while. It's going to say, "Hang on a second, I got a bunch of these things to figure out, and I'll do it." So this, so anytime you take a zip object and you put it into a list, you're basically asking Python to go and calculate all of these things and figure it all out. Okay, I mean it's not that hard, but your zip object could also have like a million things in it, and maybe you don't even need a million. Maybe you only need the first hundred, and so you know, save some computational power. Okay, um, here if you take um, uh, two, uh, if you zip together two things, but they're different lengths, so I've got uh, Ann and Elk, Ann has four, and so it matches the first characters A and E, it matches the N and the L, the N and the K, but then here we have one left over, and um, uh, basically whatever the length is of the shorter one, the, the rest get discarded, okay? Um, and if you have a list of tuples, you can iterate over them and you can unpack them as well, okay? You can um, zip multiple tuples together, okay? Or, or I guess not just tuples, multiple iterables together. So here I've got A, B, C, D, E, range five. Uh, I was trying to think of fruits that started with A, B, C, D, E, <laughs> and I, I had to come up with elderberry, okay? Um, that was a that was a search. I didn't come up with that on my own. I was like, fruits that start with E. Okay, um, and um, and you can zip them together, 
And it kind of, and again, it inter interleaves them, and I think in the way that we would expect, okay? Um, it takes the first element and, uh, and it kind of pairs it with the first element in range, first element in iterable three, first element in iterable four, right? So these are the uh, first five prime numbers, okay? So we get A0, apple two, B1, banana three, so on and so forth. Uh, and they all get kind of grouped together into tuples when you, when you zip them together. Um, okay. Um, what you can do is, here's like a, a handy little thing asking, is, is there a match between elements? So here we're going to just go through um, tuple 1 and tuple 2. We'll zip them together. And as we go through, we will unpack them into x and y. And we're going to just ask if x is equal to y. So it's going to kind of traverse two iterables, see if there's any anywhere in this, like, is, you know, the item in position three and position three the same in both in, uh, in both iterables, okay? So is there a match between A, B, C, and D, E, F? There's not. What about A, B, C, and D, E, C? Yes, there is a match. The C and the C in the third position do match. Here I've got A, B, C, D, and I've got D, C, B, A. Is there a match there? We have common elements, but at no position is the, uh, the letter the same in, uh, in both places. So that's going to come back as a false. Okay. Uh, enumerate is uh, a handy little function, and basically it, uh, it creates a zip where it has zipped the, um, whatever is the uh, whatever's in your iterable. So here I've got a string that says morning, but it's uh, basically uh, an iterable of, of letters, and it's going to zip it with basically a range object of the same length. Okay, so here for morning, it just get it's an enumerate object, basically a zip thing. It's not going to actually figure out what these things are until you actually ask for the elements. And we're going to say go through the whole thing and print everything out. And so it's basically zipping the M with a zero, a zero with a one, an R with a two, and so on and so forth. It's the same thing as doing uh, take morning and take zip, figure out the length of morning, and then you know create a range object of the same length. And zip them together. So it's it's basically that. But enumerate because that's such like a common thing where it's like I just need to kind of uh, put an index position and zip them. They, we have a dedicated function for it. But it's it's. Um, but I have I have the exact same thing here where I've got enumerate a b c d c d and here it's equivalent of taking zip and calling range four um, with a b c d. Okay, but enumerate is. Just a handy little thing where you don't have to bother calculating what the length is and stuff like that. Okay, here is a dictionary. We can ask what are the items. We can go through the uh, the items and separate out to the uh, the items which are tuples of key value pairs. And we can take the key, we can take the value and unpack them and do whatever we need to do. Similarly, here is uh, I can call enumerate, which will make a zip out of it, and then we can create dictionaries out of zips, right? And, uh, and so we will get Z, uh, zero is E, and one is F, and two is G, and so on and so forth, okay? These are uh, just handy little, handy little functions. If we want to swap the keys and the elements, we've tried um, doing something like uh, this, okay? And so we can say, all right, so here we've created uh, our dictionary uh, uh, D, and then we're going to kind of just unpack the items, and we're going to just swap the keys and the values. Um, and you know we could we could do something similar here. Um, again, with uh, with dictionaries, everything you have to have a unique unique keys. So um, so if something in this process of going through, if you encountered like the same key later, it's just going to get overwritten, right? Um, okay, this is we've we've already seen this. Uh, here's here's a list of kind of tuples, and we create a dictionary out of that. Uh, here's a zip object, and we can create a dip dictionary out of that. OK, with um, tuples, because they are immutable, they can be used as keys in a dictionary. So this is perhaps um, you know a handy little, uh, little feature. So you could imagine kind of uh, like a lookup table <laughs> or something. Um, and so here is just a very simple function. Um, and this function takes in two values, x and y, and it's going to return x squared plus 2y. 
Okay. Um, let's, you know, in this thing, it's not too hard to kind of calculate these things. But what you can do is you can create um, kind of a, a dictionary that contains all of the known values. Let's say this function took a very, very long time to compute. So what if it was something very complicated? Rather than x squared plus 2y, it was something where you know each of these operations was like, um, I don't know, you were calculating all of the digits of pi or something like this, right? And you, know, you have like a billion of these things. Um, you can, uh, we can um, kind of keep track of what we know and then if somebody asks for something that we don't know, we can go ahead and calculate it and store it in our dictionary. So uh, this is what we're going to do. I'm going to create a dictionary of kind of known values. And so the first thing in the dictionary will be a tuple containing kind of input values 0, 0 for x0 and y0. And we say, you know, we know that value there is 0. Okay. And then, um, and in our function, we're going to take our x, y, we're going to um, gather them together into a tuple. And we're going to say, if this tuple already exists in our dictionary, then we'll print out the value already exists in the dictionary. And then we're going to return the value associated with that key. So we're going to just say, hey, return whatever the dictionary does, right? Because this operation is very quick. Looking up to see if something exists in the dictionary is lightning fast. Returning a value associated with a key in a dictionary is also lightning fast. Okay. Um, on the other hand, if, if, uh, if we don't encounter the return thing, we can print the value must be calculated, and then we will calculate the value. x squared plus 2 times y uh, will give us a result. All right, and then we will um, create a new entry into our dictionary T um, using that key. I mean, new results into our dictionary known uh, using the key T, uh, and we'll store that result there. Okay, so here, um, starting off with our dictionary, which currently has one entry in it, doing zero zero, we're going to say, hey, this is already known. I don't actually have to do any computations, and we can tell you that this value. Uh, already exists in the dictionary and the value is 0. Here I'm going to give it a tuple or the value is 1, 2. This is not a known value in the dictionary. So when we run it, it's going to say the value must be calculated. It goes through, it calculates the value, and it returns 5. Um, now if I call uh, f on 1, 2, um, you know, it can, you know, that value is now in, in the dictionary. And so when I say, hey, what is, uh, what is 1, 2, it can just look it up. It can look this up in the dictionary, and it can say this value already exists in the dictionary, right? Because we're we're expanding our dictionary as we call you know more um, more values of this function. Okay, so this value had to be calculated. Um, that value has to be calculated. If I call back any of these things that I've already calculated before, that value uh, already exists in the dictionary, and and it can kind of look these things up. Um, so this could be handy if you know you need to look something up, but each of these things, you know, maybe requires a, a lot of computational expense, and you kind of want to save it or, or whatever it might be. Okay. All right. So that's um, that's I guess this lecture is mostly on tuples and also the zip <laughs> zip functionality, which is a um, I think a, a, an important thing. Let me give you your final view quiz answer. Uh, and so that is uh, question three is A. Okay, uh, that will be it. Have a great rest of your day. Have a great Friday, great weekend, and we will see you on Monday.